going on, guys? I'm about to check out Candace Owens. Y'all know how much I enjoy her content, and she's back to roasting some Taylor Swift. Let's get straight into it. Check out Candace Owens for the original video, uninterrupted by me. Right, first up on the topic. Let me slow that down. That sounded way too fast. Also, if you guys want to suggest videos to me, make sure you post that in my Discord or send it to me via Instagram. No more email, no more email. Of Taylor Swift. And like I said, I know that you guys are major Taylor Swift stands. I don't mind it. I actually think um, that there are tons of things to love about her. I've said that on the show before. I, I love Candace looks stunning, by the way. I just wanted to say that out the gate. That she keeps her image squeaky clean. I love that Taylor Swift has, you know, never promoted um, overt sexuality or the culture of pornography that I speak against. And that she kind of keeps young women in this sort of dreamy, dopey state. You know, it's very middle school. And I think that overall, that's a good thing. But what I am always concerned about is that there does seem to be this well, like cultural advantage. mesmerization when it comes to Taylor Swift. And what's important about that is that those icons have changed over time. I would say that it used to be Beyonce, where it was like, whatever Beyonce says, she's a queen. I stand Beyonce. You can say no bad words about Beyonce or the beehive is going to come for you. And what I think there's a few people. It's not like it changes. There's a few people. Once you reach a certain level of notoriety and you base certain things off of emotion to some degree, then you'll get that. You'll get that just from building a certain level of notoriety of fame. But if you're using things like emotion and all that other stuff, yeah, 100%. So you think of the Beyonce's, uh, even the Taylor Swift's, uh, who else? Doja Cat is at that point now. Um, mm, yeah, I think she got to that point. She's like, you can't cancel her. Uh, Nicki Minaj, right? A lot of people that have that, you could just call it stan culture, right? And even being emotional or speaking on your emotion, as long as you're not doing it in a manipulative way, no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with that, right? You might just be able to bear your soul on a, a song or something like that. People relate to it and they rock with you, right? As long as it doesn't go too far, there's levels to it, you know what I mean? But stand culture is a thing. Right. I think inevitably happens when someone gains that much power is that suddenly politicians start paying attention to that power and Hollywood, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, pop culture, what you're talking about, that word cult, it, it does create a cult mentality. And people don't think twice. Whatever that person says does become for them, unfortunately, like an order from God. And when politicians yes. get involved, I'll, uh, I'm thinking, of course, notoriously of See, Beyonce be the night before Hillary Clinton, and we were supposed to go to the, the polls. Hillary Clinton had her on stage in 2016, and she's basically like, I'm with her. And everyone's like, oh, I must be with her as well, simply because it's Beyonce. That's not a valid reason to vote for somebody. Yeah. So what I'm saying, essentially, about Taylor Swift is that she has- That happens all the time. All the time, fam. Nonstop. 100%, especially with Obama. Jay-Z, that was enough. Jay-Z standing next to him was good enough. People are crazy. It's become that new icon and politicians are paying attention to the power that she has. And I don't think it's by accident that even if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, I certainly am not a fan of Taylor Swift, even though I like some of her old songs. Same. You just open any app and they're just throwing you so much Taylor Swift content all the time. You can't avoid her. Why is that? It's like a psychological conditioning that's taking place on social media. Well, listen to this. Recently, the EU commissioner, vice president, uh, went on stage and basically said, we need to use Taylor Swift to mobilize young voters. Take a listen. Taylor Swift. Uh, last uh, September, she made a social media call to young Americans to register to vote. The day after her post, 35,000 young Americans had registered to vote. Now, Taylor Swift will be in Europe in May. 9th of May, Europe Day, she will be in Paris for a concert. So uh, I would very much hope that she does the same for young Europeans. And I very much hope that someone from her media team follows this press conference and relay our request. To give you some context, that is the vice. That's terrifying. That is scary as hell. 
And he's just blatantly saying it in front of everybody too. Like, oh, this, this is what we're going to have. Hopefully we can use Taylor Swift to manipulate voters. Whoa. Vice President of the European Commission. Mm -hmm. His name is Margaritas Shanas. And basically the reason why they're looking at Taylor Swift is that we're not paying attention to global politics. The EU is losing a lot of power. Um, people are starting to say, wait, why do we have this government within a government? Why do we have to listen to a bunch of unelected bureaucrats? This is really what happened with Brexit. This is the reason that the UK left the European Union. You might remember that taking place in 2016. Well, now other countries in the European Union are going, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that either. And so their idea is how can we get people to support us? How can we get people to still want there to be a European commission and a European union? And then looking at Taylor Swift. Now she's done nothing wrong. She hasn't reached out to them and said, that's still scary. That's like terrifying. Whoa. But you imagine if they're willing to say that, in front of the scenes, what what they saying? What they saying behind the scenes? Can I help? I don't think she's particularly interested in European it's politics, terrifying. but it's something that I just want to make you aware of. And what I'm constantly talking about on the show is the power of Hollywood and when that begins to conflate with politics. Uh, another notorious example of that was when Joe Biden, who clearly does not listen to Cardi B music, when he was running for uh, president and he was doing no events because of COVID and yet he made time to sit down with Cardi B. What was the message? That Remember. You ain't black if you didn't vote for him. So technically, I'm just a shadow of my former black self. Because I for damn sure didn't vote for this. This You can't blame that on me. You can't blame no votes on me, actually. That he was sending. Well, I don't have to actually talk to you about my ideas or sell you why I think that I would necessarily be a good president. I just know that 40 million of you guys are following this young woman on Instagram and you're hanging on her every word that starts to get dangerous. So if you are a mother Scary. listening to the show and you have a daughter who loves Taylor Swift, you do need to be able to speak to your, your children, your teenagers, uh, your young adults about separating a public persona from real life. You know what I mean? Uh, making true. sure that especially if it ain't their job to give opinions, <laughs> if it ain't their job to give opinions or like criticize stuff, I really wouldn't take it at uh, a high value, right? You got people like LeBron James who won't shut his ass up. It's on social media sounding stupid, sounding dumb as ever, directing his fans to do stupid stuff. He should shut up. Like, in fact, start doing comedy movies again. Not Space Jam. Space Jam was disgusting. But I loved, uh, what was it? Oh man, what was the name of that movie? Him and it's like him and Amy Schimmer, and that might be her only good movie. Something train, love train, something whatever. I don't care. Um, but he was hilarious in that. But shut your ass up when it comes to politics, society, or anything of that nature. You don't know what you're talking about. That appreciating somebody's music or loving somebody as an artist doesn't translate into something uh worse like a form of idolatry, which is basically casting a spell on people and listening to somebody's every word when you shouldn't be because your life and how you live it should not be impacted by the politics mm. of a celebrity. All right, guys, moving on. Hey, man, she did really well with that. And I agree with her. I agree with her. I think that the most you could sh should say is like someone made you want to look into something, right? If someone inspires you to question things, which is probably my goal overall, not to sway your decisions, but to make you look into stuff, not just to believe whatever you hear for first sight or like just first uh, hearing or whatever, actually do the research, right? Especially when it involves cancer culture and things of that nature. Don't just believe whatever mainstream media is telling you. They lie in the majority of the time, in my personal opinion. Please don't delete my channel, YouTube. In case they, they go into, you might want to check me out on my other platforms as well as check me out on Patreon, check me out on Rumble, Twitch, and all that good stuff. It's nasty out here. Shout out to Candace Owens if you want to watch the full video uninterrupted, especially those people that keep telling me to shut up and play the video without talking. Well, 
what sense does that make? Never mind. Like trying to explain anything to people that think that it is crazy. Keep complaining in the comment section. It does really well for my engagement. But go and check out Candace Owens. You should be able to find a link in the description. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Now, if you have some extra time, can you do me a favor? Check out my music. I rap, I sing, and I make beats. All of that should be linked in the description. Also, if you want to watch me live stream, you can check me out on BXB Boy Live. That's another YouTube channel. It should be linked to my homepage. And you can check me out on Twitch and Rumble. I'm streaming on all these platforms, man. I'm trying to just get out there. Also, if you want to support me, you can sign up for my memberships on my channel, as well as my Patreon for as low as $1. You get exclusive access to a bunch of videos early before you even get it on YouTube, as well as videos that's not ever going to be on YouTube. Stuff that actually got me suspended and banned. It's, it's kind of my anti-cancel culture fun for BX Beast Boy. You know what I mean? And it also helps me get resources for certain video essays and things of that nature. Check that out if you're able to. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. And join my Discord if you are able to, man. The link should be somewhere within my description or somewhere on my channel. I would really love to see you there, man. That's where you get a chance to talk to me and the rest of my supporters, man. I appreciate you guys. Bang, gang, out.